Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this video series on BX Digital version 3 from Brainworks. My name is Larry Holcomb, aka Get to Know, and I'm here with Groove 3 to deliver this video series. So I'm really excited to be talking about this plugin. This plugin won Future Music's award of best plugin of the decade. So Future Music, if you don't know, is a publication based around music technology, very well respected publication. So for them to give this plugin the plugin of the decade was obviously a very high accolade indeed for Brainworks. And the reason why I think it won that award is that at the time, especially when it came out, it was such a game changing plugin. The ability to be able to process the mono section and the stereo section of your track separately was such a huge kind of breakthrough in technology, first initially as a hardware unit from Brainworks and then as the plugin. So this is obviously version three of the plugin. So it's been through three different versions now with extra parameters and functions being added with each new version. So at its core, it's an ultra low latency 11 band stereo EQ that works in different modes. The most important of which is the ability to work in mid side mode. So to process the mono section and the stereo section of the track separately. So we have the ability to work in conventional left, right mode if we want to, or we can split and work on the stereo and the mono section separately. Now, why is that important? Well, I work as a mastering engineer. And one of the first things I do if I get sent a pre-master or if I'm working one of my own productions and I'm mastering one of my own productions, I will always listen to the mono portion of the track and the stereo portion of the track in solo. Because one of the reasons or one of the ways in which I like to get a mix that sounds really big and lush and wide and big is to make sure that the stereo section, so the side band, is nicely mixed and as balanced as it needs to be. So by balance, I don't mean it's flat across the frequency spectrum because obviously we don't want to have loads of bass information in the stereo. And also, to be honest, I don't like to have huge amounts of very, very high frequencies in the stereo band either. But if we had a very kind of muddy stereo band and we were a little bit disproportionately low in the, say, the high mids or the high frequencies, not the ultra high frequencies, but that would actually lead to a track which doesn't sound as open as it needs to be. So I almost treat the stereo section as a separate process for, especially EQ, I actually try to keep it as uncompressed as possible. So really that's one that I approach more with EQ, possibly dynamic EQ as well, if I want to bring more things out. But by listening to the stereo section in isolation, you can actually determine, you know, what needs to be done on the stereo section and it will go a long way to making your mix sound really big and wide. So that's why I love these kind of plugins that allow you to work in mid side mode. So as well as being able to actually directly EQ the stereo section, we also have a nice way of just being able to boost up the stereo width as well. You can see with the stereo width control. So it could just be as simple as boosting up the stereo width a little bit if it's already nicely mixed and balanced. So in this first video, we're going to talk about the interface of the plugin so we can locate where everything is located. So moving forward, that makes things easier. So we're going to start in the middle here. This is our kind of master section here. So we have the ability to set an input gain and output gain, stereo width, as I said, various different balance controls as well. And we can also choose which mode we're going to be using. And we have some solo options too. Now over to the left here, we have a mono section. So this is going to be working strictly on the mono portion of the sound. So the portion of the track, which is basically the same in the left and right hand speakers. And this is where we have the ability to set our EQ curve. Then across to the right here, we have a stereo section, which allows us to do the same to the side, basically. So the difference between the left and the right hand speakers, the stereo-ness of the sound. Now, moving down to the central section here, we have the ability to change the kind of emphasis of the bass frequencies, also the emphasis of the presence frequencies, the upper frequencies. And we also have a dynamic EQ here as well. We then have this gain scale option, which we're going to come back to, and a mono maker, so we can make sure that all the frequencies below a certain point are mono. Why would you want to do that? Well, especially if you were cutting a track to vinyl, actually vinyl record players, if there's too much information in the low end, it will actually knock the needle out of the groove. So you can't have very stereo bass. And I would say as a general rule, it's good for the mix to have maybe somewhere between 60 and 80 hertz and below to be mono. If you don't want to go too high with that because you actually start to lose a little bit of the size of the track in those kind of lower frequencies. So we have these obviously for the mono portion, the stereo portion here as well. Now moving down to the bottom section here, if I just make some changes here, you'll see that this is reflected in our EQ display down here. So it basically just shows you what you're doing to your respective mono and stereo sections. And then moving across the right here, we have our volume meters. So we have a pre EQ meter here, a post EQ. So the level pre-equalization, the level post-equalization, and we have a final output level here, which is the sum of the mono section and the stereo section together. Finally, across to the right, we have a balance meter here and also a correlation meter showing us how in phase we are and also 
how balanced the track is between the left and the right hand channels. So for example, if you had a track which was favoring the left or the right hand side, that would come up in the balance meter. And likewise, if you had a track which was very out of phase, that would show up in the correlation meter. Okay, so that's an overview of what this plugin is all about and also the different sections of the interface here. One last thing I should say is that this comes in kind of two different flavors. We have the kind of full BX Digital version 3, and then we also have a BX version 3 mix. Now, this is more for an individual channel, so we don't have the same mid-side functionality here. This is more of a traditional EQ with some of these extra parameters here as well, whereas the mastering one gives us full control over the mono and the stereo sections. Now, the mix version is just a stripped down version, as I said, without the stereo section functionality. So we won't go through that separately because it has the same functions as the kind of full version has here, which is the mastering version. OK, so we know that this is a EQ that allows you to separate the mono and the stereo portions of your sound. Super useful. I told you about how important that is to get a big, wide sounding mix with nice 3D depth and separation. A lot of that can be improved with separate EQ of the stereo and the mono sections. This plugin also has the ability to make frequencies below a certain point mono and also to create some tonal shifts, some kind of tilts in the frequency spectrum to balance things out a little better. We know that our mono section is located over here, so our EQ here, stereo section EQ is here. Then we have a master section here to set kind of input and output levels, etc. We then have this middle section here with the bass shift, present shift, and dynamic EQs for mono and stereo sections. And then we have a graph showing us what we're doing to our frequency spectrum and various different gain meters here with pre-EQ, post-EQ, and an output level. And then a balance and a correlation meter in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so now we've covered those basics. We're going to head across, first of all, and have a look at the master section. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.